Hello everybody, welcome back. 1862 Brothers at War by Compass Games, designed by Christopher Moeller. We are on a doing a learn to use the Vassal module video. Sorry about that. This module will be released six months after the release of the game. Um get to the main screen here. <coughs> Like the tenth time I tried this video, I keep finding things I need to fix. Proud with doing it before you really play test the video. But I got guys that I want to play test this, and I can't do that if they don't know how to use the module. And it's best I'm finding this stuff anyway. So um, when you first start out, I do have all thirteen pre-generated, predefined scenarios set up in here. You'll still need the scenario book to show you how to. Uh, what the special rules and everything and explain some of the counters and whatnot to you and so there's a lot more involved than just setting the pieces up and I do not have any uh, charts in here other than the sequence of play so you will still need the physical copy of this game to play this game unless of course you're play testing the module for me um, when you first open the uh, predefined up you're going to have all your activation markers here just select them all activation markers have a very simple menu it's mask or return to activation deck and we're just going to return them all to the activation deck um, next up we have your offboard artillery cards I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one because sometimes they become they, they deactivate during the game and in that case, you're going to just hit the return to deck. Um, if these are eliminated, I would suggest putting them on the brigade card as a casualty. I would not recommend deleting them. But if you need to delete, you can delete. Um, I keep these in the hands. On the Confederate hand, you see South Mountain and Antietam. We actually need Nicodemus Hill, so how about we draw the right one? Hauser is not in play yet. I'm going to go ahead and just draw the card out. You see it's got nothing on it, just the menu. We do have a place Pelham, place Wooding, place Carpenter. That gets you the counters in there without having to dig through the counter pallets. I hate digging through counter pallets. I try to do everything at start stacks. Um, on the offboard artillery, and every combat piece is going to have the same basic um, menu that being um, their front side their back side out of command disrupted or finished in the case of offboard artillery they become used or spent and then deployed when they're on their front side offboard onboard artillery will be limbered and deployed and have the same command out of command, disrupted, and these come into play and finished at, during the game. Just get rid of all of them. Um, because of the fluidity of this game with the chits, and when we remove disrupted, and when you remove finished, and when you remove out of commands, I do not have a remove all button up here for any of those. Um, <sighs> Infantry. Infantry will have their formed and unformed side, and again, the same basic, uh, try not to delete anything. Uh, it just makes it easier on you. I had the option available because people complained about it before, so I made it available to delete things. Um, all your reinforcements for each scenario should be put up here. They should have all the counters. The activation chits will not be up here. Reinforcements will have their activation chits on their brigade card, which I'll show later. The turn will report back which turn you're on by showing up here. Game turn, moves turn, one to turn two, etc., etc., etc. Uh, you will have to move that by hand. I don't have anything fancy in there. Um, VP hexes and locations. You will not be able to move them unless you hit this, hold this shift key down and select them. Remember, if you're going to select them, don't hold the shift key down after you've come from another piece. Say we've already been playing with Jackson, and oh, I want to move, I want to change uh, the control. Don't do it without 
get rid of Jackson first. See how they're both highlighted? Make sure nothing's highlighted. I click somewhere on the map and then I click and hold shift and click on the VP. That will allow you to switch it from Union to Confederate, delete it, or clone it. Um, they will be placed out according to the scenario specifications. If you find you prefer to have some more out there, feel free to drag them out there. They're available to you. Uh, you will be able to change sides and the retires button. Union, if you're a union side, you will not be able to move Confederate counters and you will not be able to see the Confederate hand. Everything else is visible because you would be able to see the damage to your opponents on the battlefield. You will be able to see it in this game also. Besides, if you're playing head-to-head, -head, those will be laid out right next to the game board so you'll be able to see your opponents. Um, we switch to the Union side or Confederate side. You will not be able to move the Conf Union pieces where you will be able to use move the Confederate ones. And again, you will not be able to see the Union hand. You will be able to see the Confederate hand, though. Solo, you can see both. And that's what we'll use for the rest of this demonstration. Hopefully, I get through this. This is like my 10th take. I keep finding things I need to fix, which is good. I'd prefer me to find it than you guys when you're testing or using the module. Um... Basically, that's all we need to worry about there. Counters. The only ones you really should need to use are the ones in the game counters tab. Casualty buttons, Union or Friendly are the exact same. Uh, they are put onto your brigade displays as you take casualties as per the rules. I'm not going to get into that. Um, very simple counter. Control in case you need to draw more out. They flip from the Union to Confederate. Free activation as per the rules, Union, Confederate, and they can be cloned or, uh, and um, deleted also. Uh, reserves, you should not need these. They should be on your brigade displays for each scenario needed. And remnants, you will need to place them as your brigades become broken. Uh, they're also flippable. Um, that's it for you now. Markers, try not to delete anything. Um, so you don't have to use these. Uh, for this one in particular, if you delete one and you have to use this, it is going to be a lot of manual work for you. And actually, I took away the delete, so you will not be able to see that. Um, actually, there is delete in there. I made it a hidden key, Control D. If you want, if you want to get rid of something, you don't see the menu for it. Just hit Control D. That way. You you don't delete something by mistake. These in particular, I took that away from because they're, it's very important not to delete them. Out of command markers and finished markers, disrupted markers are all in the counters. You should not need them. Union counters and Confederate counters for each battle. You should not need them. They should all be on the board. I do prefer to have everything laid out. Um, so that all you have to do is play. You don't need to dig through these counter um, pallets. They're a pain in the butt. Um, dice. I went with the random die face, a uh, die uh, number of dice because of the way this game works on um, save rolls and attack rolls. So you just enter the amount of dice you're going to roll. So we're attacking with a factor of seven. We need to add one modifier, or actually we're going to subtract a modifier. Maybe we're shooting up here, so I don't know the rules yet. I haven't really read through them too well yet. But say you got a minus one, it's going to just give you all your results up here with the minus one already applied. You're looking for fives or sixes, so you would have only had two hits out of that. And then it tells you the Confederate rolls as you rolled from the CSA dice. The USA is going to roll to say six dice with no modifiers, boom going to give me five, six rolls there, no modifications, and we only got one save on that. You see it says Union Rolls. Um, activation next. Activation is the main driver of this game. You want to use all your activation chits on this screen. I mean, this, this uh, map, I guess you call it, display. In this display only, you see for this scenario, we have some uncommitted brigades down here. 
I'm not going to go through the rules. That's just where they get placed. You place your broken brigades here and your exhausted brigades here. As you draw chits, you're going to put them in the starting and start. And it will show you up here which one you're on. You're going to draw them down until two of these time markers show. You only have one in the cup at start. So it doesn't matter whether you get that one right away. It's it's You're going to get most of your guys activated in this game or in this scenario before you run out of time for the turn. So you just keep drawing them down. If you hit a um, the card icon, both players draw a card from the hand and put them to your hand. I'm not going to get into the rolls again on that. You just keep drawing these until I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. We draw a time marker right there. You're going to bring another one of these and send it to the activation cup. And there's not enough for two of them until you start getting the reinforcements and stuff in. And we just draw, see what there we got the second, that would be the end of the turn right there. Say it wasn't him, you just keep drawing until you reach the end of the turn. Second time piece. It is impossible to get the third, you can get the third one in there, all you do is draw that into the cup until some of these extra chits are drawn. Um, the way I have it set up is... This return chits is going to return everything to the cup and it's going to put your countdown markers back over here. It will not affect your uncommitted brigades. It will not affect your broken brigades. And it will not affect your, your exhausted brigades. You can hit that all you want. They're not going to move off of here. All right. Um, that, that's activation. That's all you really need to know about that. Um, next, USA hand, the Union hand. Your all your players' cards from your deck will come up here. You have, a, I think, you start the scenario with three. Those are shit cards. You just you discard them. You put those down in your hand. Your offboard artillery will also be up here. You have plenty of spaces for extra cards, um, but at the end of the turn, and sometimes even during the turn you will be forced to discard down to your player's hand. I'm not going to get into the rules again. We're just going to, if you discard, um, these all these cards have a simple thing. Um, just simple menu, just discard to get rid of them. You know, go over here, and if this fills up, you just reshuffle. Uh, your offboard artillery, we went through that earlier. You just select that to pull the proper card and set it out onto the game. Uh, but they should already be placed out there for you, except for when they come in as a reinforcement. Um, brigade, sorry, I'm making sure I get everything covered. Brigade uh, uh, displays. The brigades that are on the recent reinforcement track will have their activation chits up here. Mainly so they don't keep getting put back into the cup by mistake. And you also have your um, skirmishers. Boy, I'm brain dead today. Skirmishers have the same menu that we had showed earlier, um, except they have a casualty side to them or. In the case of cavalry, which this is not, um, they have a mounted side. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm a mess. I admit to it. Reserves. You manually move the reserves as you go until they're over here and exhausted. Then you change the reserves to exhausted. Change your... your um, leader to exhausted also they also have a um, well, he's on the board their exhausted side as you have your your regiments destroyed you will go over and grab your casualty counters like i said these are the only ones you should have to use casualty counters you will draw them in and place them in your slots and i don't have these locking on to the grid for 
in this game you have the ability to stack side by side and it is designed that way so you don't have to stack them on top of each other so you can better see what's going on so i don't have any stacking really in place they can stack it's just i don't have them locked into the grid so you can move them wherever you want on the hexes to maximize your space so that applies to all of them. So we can get rid of those. Delete that. We can move him back. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to save this game anyway. Recover him. Um, let's go to another brigade. Um, Valverde, I know, has them. Oh, not set up for Valverde, though. No cavalry there. Jackson, same thing. No cavalry there. No cavalry there. I'll show you the cavalry off of the uh, menu. Get that out of Alberti easy. All right, cavalry. Cavalry will have a mounted and dismounted side. That's the only difference on cavalry and on skirmishers. That are cavalry, they will have a skirmish side and a mounted side. Uh, those are the only differences. All your brigade displays will be here. You only need the brigade displays for the battle you are playing. You will not have any counters on any of the other ones. The deck, I showed you that earlier. You'll draw the decks from the decks directly to your hand so your opponent cannot see um, what you're drawing. So he won't know what's in your hand. Solitaire, obviously, you're going to know. The SOP, um, I have that uh, starting out at 63%. You can bring that up to 100% for those like me that have trouble reading. And I have my famous little arrow in there. I take no, I got that artwork from somebody, so I take no credit for that arrow. Um, but I do use it in everything. Just so if you save your game, you know exactly where you're at as you go through the sequence of play. A very nice, informative sequence of play, I might add. Um, so you work your way through that. Notes. I have notes in here for gameplay. I very rarely use them because I play solitaire, but I know head-to-head -head and playing online um, through Vassal servers, this is important to have, so I have that in here. Um, next we have your, if you want to take a screenshot, it'll come out and just name it a PNG and find a location for it. I always use a screens within my parent menu. Brothers at War, I'll have a screens and I'll put that in there. Uh, your zoom and unzoom, I started a default at 63. There's 100%, and so you get a real good look at the quality of art that comes in this game. I have added a shading and rounded um, routine to all the counters to make them look more like game counters that you would see on the board in front of you. As I stated earlier, I like to make it look as much like you are playing it on your table as possible. Because I know a lot of guys don't like playing on the computer. A lot of us have to due to space and stuff. But there's there's a good look at the artwork in this. And you can go all the way up to 160. So I uh, start degrading a hair there. But you can still see some nice quality. Um, just be being anal. And you can come all the way out to 20% if you need to. But I don't know why you would. Nobody can read that good. But if you want a good overview of the map. There you go. You can see all my off-board artillery set up and the general overall setup of the game. Default back to 70, uh, 63. Also have a line of sight marker. Uh, to draw between, and actually I'm going to change that a little bit to make that more demonstrative and probably red. But that will give you your... Um, Ranges, try to remember you, you can, because of the way I have the stacking set up, you can go from side to side. I would not recommend doing that. If you want an accurate reading, take it from the center of the hex to the center of the hex. It's just there for more for um, 
informant and telling you how your range and everything and then checking for line of sight. And I'm not going to get into the rules. It's just there. I will modify that so it's red. Um, and actually, I want to mess with the opacity a little bit on that too. And then remove all move markers. But I don't have moved showing up on any of these counters because we have a finished marker. So that's actually a moot point. I can probably remove that. There you have it. That's basically it in a nutshell. I think that explains everything of the uh, module. It's a pretty basic, easy module. It's a cool little fast playing game. I like the scale of it. I hope more of them come out. And I hope you all enjoy the game. Thanks for joining me, and we will see you all next time.